Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hanging with Howie. And as always, one of our long-term sponsors is DJEventPlanner.com. They'll be down in the comments below when this goes to YouTube, along with our other illustrious sponsors. So we want to thank them very much. And I want to thank my panel here. And I'll go left to right. We have Buddy from uh, Chicagoland area. Bang, bang. And of course, we have Boston John from Boston, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Wicked. Wicked. Uh, ooh. And we have the one and only king of OG YouTube videos, Brian S. Red with us. Hi. Thank you, Brian. And we have Eric from, I forget where you're from, Eric. Where are you from? New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire. Okay, yes, you're way up there. And Jay from, I got to say it, Temecula, California, because it was in the news recently. Not today. Today he's in ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah. South Point, yeah. Las Vegas. So, wages. Um, Hey, wow. guys, I watched the earlier show, the live show um, that uh, John Young, uh, Dan Carpenter, and Cubby do. And they were talking about ceremony mics. And I thought we could expand on, on that and include reception microphones. And the, the chat was so active. Don't use a handheld mic. You know, it comes up in the pictures and on and on. And people are, you know, like, no, I use, you know, the dead cat. And and I'm thinking, yeah, it looks great on a white dress. And, you know, <laughs> myself, I just, I think it's a budget thing. You know, it's like, hey, look, if you want to pay $3,000, I can mic everybody up and get a special white, you know, you know, uh, you know, pack for, you know, for the bride. Uh, but it has been necessary for me. I've been doing, you know, the handheld for a long time. And another thing I did um, with a very high quality uh, belt pack was give it to the uh, officiant. And if they have a book, you clip it on the book and you pick up all three. And there's many ways you can do it. I happen to use this, the Go Rack, which is great for eliminating feedback and also bringing compression up. So you hear the woman as well, or the, or the bride, whatever, whatever you have. But uh, for the most part, it's just a handheld. It's like, what's your budget? You know, I can do all that stuff. And I have, I've done this for friends when they go, oh man, you know, they, they don't want a handheld, uh, you know, they don't want pictures and that. And so it's like, okay, I just go and all I do is tech the ceremony and I walk out with 200 bucks for 20 minutes, you know? So what say you? I, I know a couple of you guys are in the chat. They're very active. <laughs> Jay's going to have a very strong opinion on this, and I'd love to hear it. I I know he will because he had I his. Did, um, yeah, you mean I did one handheld on a stand mm -hmm. for probably eighteen years, mm -hmm. and I brought the stand down. Mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. in the headshot, right? Logic was it was I spent about fourteen years on a rooftop venue, and the wind was just too much for lavaliers, right? And my policy now is you can get two lobs, one for the officiant, one for the groom. But if it's windy, the best outcome would be one hand held, either held on a stand or in a book. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I understand the like, oh, everyone needs to be clipped and let's get, you know, right. somebody had said they were t thinking about doing shotguns and, you know, shotgun mics that you could point <laughs> I, I think the reality is the officiants traditionally dressed in something dark i use a black mic stand it's not the end of the world right it's not out of line right. if i do a battery ceremony i do not offer 
two microphones. You get one. Mm -hmm. Who really want clip-ons, that's not in the cards. Because if it's on a battery pack, I'm not going to use more electronics to plug into it. Mm -hmm. Jay, I want to hear all about this, but I think you should turn your mic up a little bit if you can. Yeah. Just a, just a hair if it's down. Mm -hmm. If not, and I can't believe I'm saying this, speak louder. <laughs> check one, check one. <laughs> there you Is go. that better? There you Thanks go. a lot, Brian. <clears throat> Different computer. <laughs> no, I just, I think... 99% of the time, it comes down to being the professional and explaining it to the only people that matter, the couple. Because if you leave them alone to their own devices, they're going to say, we don't want to stand. Why not? Well, we saw on the Nod or Wedding Wire that that does, you're missing the point. And every time I've used a stand, I tell the officiant, pick up the stand at the end, step off to the right or left, pronounce the bride and groom so they can kiss so there's no one in the photo but them there's no stand and when they hear that they come around pretty quickly you know but yeah. i you know you start at ground zero a sm58 on a wire is guaranteed mm -hmm. a handheld is not guaranteed if there's heavy wind handheld is better than clip on mm -hmm. in a perfect world everyone gets clipped on like you said howie but you're going to pay more for it Oh, a lot more. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's me. Yeah. All right. Who's next? John, you were very vocal in, in the chat. Oh, I was. I was. You know, and I did, like like Jay's theory, I like to have a handheld that's wired because that's the ultimate backup. If everything right. else fails, copper is king. Copper wired is. Wired mic is always going to work. Mm -hmm. Second best, it's going to be a wireless handheld that should mm -hmm. be nearby in case something goes wrong. It's just a, for, for you guys that are building your arsenal of wireless mics and what you should possibly have. Now, we've had some situations where we had an efficient, like, well, I, I have to have a lapel. And you, and you put them on the lapel and like, Let, let's sound check you. One, two, one, two, sound good. Turn your head to the left. Like, couldn't hear you. Turn your head to the right. Yeah, couldn't hear you also. So do you understand you have to talk forward or else we're not going to hear you? And then we've outfitted them with a, a boom, just a yeah, countryman or whatever. Yeah, the countryman style mic. Right. Yeah. And so it's just very small, very discreet. Usually they're beige in color. You can get something that's very, and they, then suddenly they turn left and turn right and they can hear themselves. You know, and we want to thank the heavens today. And like, wow, I'm, you didn't shave this morning, it's, huh? It can still be heard on the microphone. Like, wow. You know, and it didn't, there's no rustle. There's no, but again, the, the, the enemy is the wind because that's, you know, and you got to figure out which way the wind is blowing. Any way the wind blows. If it's, it's on the wrong side, it's all going into, into the microphone. Sometimes lapels make sense. You tuck it under a tie, under the, under the lapel of the jacket. You know, the, uh, it's, you, you got to work with every situation is different, but you got to have a lot of tools in the toolbox to say, this is what's going to work today. Yes. Now, if I was in J spot and I'm working on the top of a building and wind is always a factory, like, yeah, well, a low microphone is probably best. And then under a blazer lapel mm -hmm. is gonna give you the best sound. We just said you have to kind of test everything, you know, and you, you sound check the efficient before and you give them options. And I've, and like I said, some of the, some of the ones that really wanted lapels, once they heard what they sounded like on the follows your head around anywhere you go microphone, they're like, oh, I kind of like this. Because it's the inexperience that they've done. This is their uh, first wedding or second. And they didn't have that as an option last time. And they're like, this is a lot better than what I had last time. I can hear myself clearly in the speakers. And you say, this, this is maybe a better choice. This is, you know, especially, you know, when they were talking on the show tonight. And Dan said, we're, we're recording this for the bride and groom. So everybody's voice matters. You mic the efficient, you mic the groom. Generally, I don't mic the bride because there's enough live mics there that you can figure out mm -hmm. which one is going to catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe that's just me, but like, you know, I'm not going to mess around with her and her outfit and her dress. And all the photos are always about the bride anyway. It's like, let's not have anything, mm -hmm. you know, getting in the way of that. Um, but that just, just gives you a couple of other ways to get it done. It's not just. You know, and but still have a corded mic there for the just in case what ifs, you know, you get a problem with the with the frequencies, there's a mic right there. You know, you hopefully you go to the handheld, but if not, you've got one that's on a on an XLR wired directly back to your board 
everyone's going to hear everything. There's, there's more than one ways to get it done. And, um, mm -hmm. I say that's, 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 that's kind of, mm -hmm. you just, you just got to kind of roll with it and see, see what the day gives you. And then you figure out what's, what's the best option to, to get it to be right. I, I, I got to take issue with, see what the day gives you kind of thing, because it's like, Hey, it's costly and it's more stuff to carry and more stuff to tech. Have you not been moved from one location to another, like at the start of an event and now you're, oh, now you're here yeah. and you thought you were there, but now you're here. Yeah. And I let them know ahead of time. Hey, look, this wired mic is your friend, you know, always yeah, have one of those. Unless, you know, I have a very high end one. Thanks to Brian, um, you know, very high end wireless and it, it's never failed me, even in the congested area I'm at. So, buddy, what say you? You're the high-priced DJ in the group. <laughs> <laughs> the overpriced DJ, what do you say? No, overpriced? No, overpriced. Yeah, he's, he's he's right right priced. Uh, <laughs> We're all going to raise our prices. You're worth every penny. <laughs> yes, yes, you right. are. The, the, thing is, the thing is this. I always use lapel microphones. That is my primary microphones, and you know, I, I like hiding them and stuff like that, especially when it went windy. And it's basically the same thing you guys are just saying. You know, it's the stuff I do every single wedding, every single ceremony. I'm always making sure that it sounds right. And, yeah, you do run into a hiccup here and there. It's because you do it with people. But a lot of times you explain to people what they're doing and how to do things. You work with them. And you explain, you know, do this, do that. And 99.9% .9 of the time, not a problem. Those small little problems are usually here and there things that you can fix very quickly. But mm -hmm. it's one of the things that I feel that you need to have enough, you know, knowledge and understanding of your equipment to foresee and foreshadow any kind of problems and then kind of nip it before it happens. And again, having an extra microphone on a cable, you know, mm -hmm. just in case the world should end, mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing to have as a backup. And being, you know, being a person like everyone else here and a DJ like everyone else here, we just want to go out there and do our best job. And that's the best thing we could possibly do. Make mm -hmm. sure you understand your equipment. Make sure you know it. Make sure you read your manuals, like how he always says, <laughs> and then make sure that you know your product before you walk out there. Don't go out there, you know, oh, I never used this before because that's where you run into problems. But make sure you have a very feasible backup as well. Thank you very much. Last but not least... Eric from New Hampshire. All right. I, I am going to go along with, I use an SM58 wireless mic straight up and down on a black stand. Mm -hmm. And I know people in the chat said things about, okay, well, they're going to be in the picture. Well, look, you got 200 people. Right. You've got the bridal party. The officiant, the bride and groom on the state, what do you think you're going to see? A microphone's not going to make or break a picture. You right. gotta, you know what I mean? That's just my outlook on it. And mm -hmm. I do have a, I do run XLR cable in case with an SM58 wired, but the mm -hmm. wireless has never seemed to fail me. And it's always worked. And knock on wood, you know, it's, I've had very good luck with it. Um, the lapels I've tried, I've either a gotten wind like everybody's saying, or feedback. Mm -hmm. Some reason or another, the feedback with the lapels. Oh, there's a reason for it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there, there is. is, but I don't have the time to figure it out. Nor and do I want to. Well, like, see, that's yeah, yeah. that's where the expense comes in, be right. because your your tech knowledge is worth money. But the yeah. setup time is also worth a lot more money. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just wanted to say hi to Jay. I haven't talked to him in a month. I didn't want to interrupt him. So hi, Jay. Yeah. Hey. And all right. now, now we're going to switch over to the reception. Wait a minute. I didn't get to go. <laughs> oh, you didn't oh. get to go. Oh, I thought you went first. Uh, no, I'm, you did. I'm so no. sorry. I mean, I'm here for you. I, I first have to say a couple Brother? things. Jay, in this light, it looks like a mugshot of Kurt Russell from like the nineties <laughs> of something he did really bad and it turned up on TMZ. I just, just had to put that out there. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> proof of life. <laughs> <laughs> How much is the ransom? Yes. He was drinking a white claw. I think he's okay. <laughs> Put a patch over your eye and you're sick, Pliskin. We thought we heard you were dead. Um, how's, how's Goldie? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a lot of gold in here. <laughs> right, there is. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and it, something that Buddy had said just about writing the lapel mics that Buddy, we haven't mentioned in the show, is that Buddy and his wife Tracy are partners in this. So, mm-hmm. when he's wiring or they're wiring couples, he has Tracy there to wire a bride. Mm-hmm. So, she's not getting handsy with her. We don't all have that. So that's, mm-hmm. we all had a Tracy. Maybe we, we might be able to pull that off a little better. Yeah. <laughs> One handed me trying to go up a bride's dress might be a little weird, but yeah, a little bit. <laughs> here or there. So I will point out a few reality things first. And, and they're, they're things that no one wants to hear, but they're absolutely true. First of all, you're putting so much importance into something that has a greater than 50% chance of not mattering in two years. Exactly. Okay. This is not 1942 where they're going to get married at 18 and they're going to be 90 together and it's going to be great. People are divas, man. I mean, come on. Right. It's ridiculous. The other thing that I want to mention is something that no one's talked about. We're working with amateurs. Everyone Mm. we're working with is an amateur. Half of our efficiency are amateurs. Yes. And they're out there doing it for the first time these days. They've gotten ordained online. They're the cousin or <laughs> stepdad or whatever. Yep. And they're giving this, this uh, pr- ceremony presentation for the very first time. Uh, they're yeah. come on. Yeah, we're working with complete amateurs here and to put a bunch of pro gear on them and expect it to go flawlessly might be ill advised sometimes. Yes. With the lapel microphones, the biggest problem I've had with them is that you try to hide them or conceal them, whatever, and they end up getting rubbed on constantly by some other article of clothing. And every time they shift in their rented polyester tux or whatever, or, or that, you know, you ever felt a wedding dress? It, it doesn't yeah. feel nice. It's, it's not a, it's nice to look at. It's not nice to touch. It's, yeah. it's, it's very, it's, it's nylon. And yeah. that kind of stuff can, can rub if it's mm. a flowers or whatever. There's a lot of garb that goes along with what people are wearing for a wedding sometimes. And it, 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 it's just not very friendly for this. It's not like you're putting a clip on a t-shirt. Right. So I want to mention that much like Eric, I have not had a problem with the wireless. We've got a good wireless. It's fine. And I am running the, wireless handheld on a stick and the wireless I run is a cardioid wireless cardioid mm-hmm. is the pickup pattern yes it's the same pickup pattern that most people have been using forever and ever I mean mm-hmm. the Shure SM58 came out before I was born and it was a cardioid microphone it still is <laughs> well there's a super cardioid microphone yes. and that has a narrower pickup pattern so it's not picking up as many things around you Mm-hmm. as a cardioid is. Cardioid picks up a little bit of background noise, but not a lot. I don't remember the term for the lapel mic, but it's more like a PZA pickup pattern where it gets everything in the room, including your speakers, and that's why you're getting feedback. Because when you, you try to turn the mic up, it's picking up everything, including your audio, where a cardio- cardioid mic is a lot more friendly with the pickup pattern for what's up close to it. And I feel like it's ideal for what Jay's doing and, and for what Eric's talking about doing and, and what I'm doing with, with the single. And I also want to mention, well, a couple of things. Sorry, I, my thoughts are a little jog, uh, jumbled. How he brought up a very interesting point at the top of the show. A lot of it's budgetary. Mm. Yes. So, the, look, 400 bucks. That's a wedding ceremony in my reality where I live in my market. And that's on top of what's going on later on in the day with the cocktail and the reception. So it's an extra 400 bucks. No, it's not tons of my time. Yes. I've got great little ceremony systems built to do this, but I'm not raking in $2,800 like Jim's thrown in Indianapolis. And I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it and good for him, but I can't get it. I can get eight. If I show up 
and I direct the ceremony the day before, then I give it to him for eight. But mm. last thing, and I swear I'll shut up. <laughs> if you're having a problem with wind noise on a cardioid microphone, handheld or wireless, it doesn't matter. Just get yourself a windsock. A foam windsock over that microphone will eliminate that. And mm. when I say eliminate, I live on Lake Michigan. And I've done wedding ceremonies on Lake Michigan in high winds, 40, 50 mile an hour winds. It's insane. I did a wedding and there's a video of it on YouTube. Blanca was with me because we knew the people getting married. Her job was to hang onto the tent pole so it didn't blow away. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. that windy. The, the lake, we had weights on the legs and they were still lifting up. Not that Blanca weighs much, but you know, it was, it was something. Stand there and keep this tent from blowing away, please, was her job. And there was not wind noise in that microphone. Mm. So those Heck. are disposable. They're a few bucks. You can get them a lot of different colors. But uh, don't ask me how I know this, but do not no. get them in peach. Just don't get a windsock in peach. <laughs> it's not a good look. Right. They sell them in peach. You get the variety pack. You think you're fun with the colors? Oh, yeah, the peach one away. That, that's when they make a meme out of you or something, yeah, right? That's, that's when they yeah. you don't want to be seen. In, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's more that's... for a band where it's like, okay, the peach color, and you take a peach colored piece of tape and put it on your mixing board. Yeah. You point it at anything other than someone's mouth. <laughs> and put it at a drum. <laughs> yeah. Put it at an instrument. Put yeah. it at an amp. That's fine. Well, don't the put it at your mouth. The implications of a peach colored one air. You can imagine. Yeah, you're right. Mm. I, I I I yield the rest of my time to the man from New Jersey. Oh, right. <laughs> How about we go to the reception <laughs> for myself? We go in the reception. I got to tell you, one of the silver linings of the COVID area was not passing a mic around. But having a mic on a stand, and guess what happened? When I gave somebody a handheld wireless mic, they would drift away, and they would not be in the picture for the <laughs> photographer to get them giving the speech with the couple right beside them. So I would put my wireless mic on a stand, and I gaff taped it so they couldn't get it off. You know, and it you know it's black, so it was all hidden, and um, you know it was the quick release, like you have Brian, you know, up and down, very the easy. Clutch, the clutch system for the, the clutch, yeah. telescoping clutch, yeah. And I tell you, it was a godsend. Uh, you know, silver lining from COVID, and that's what I had been using after that. You know, and it was be like, here's your microphone. You know, just talk into it. You know. Uh, and that that's it, you know. Um, all right. Um, who wants to go next on? Oh, Jay's got stuff to say about this one. Jay, of course. <laughs> I, well, I do this. I do this. I have the clutch stand. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing weddings during COVID and post, I just said, you know what? You have to talk through on the stand. And I'll replace the windsock. Right. Right. But yeah. you, you have to use it because of video, photo. And if you have a phone and a drink, it makes it a lot easier on you. Plus, I guarantee they'll hear you. So I would just stand there. And as I introduced a toaster, I would push the clutch. And then I would get it perfect. And it sounded great. But I would still get Uncle Bob, who was in a band maybe <laughs> once, you know, <laughs> you know what? And eventually it's at his waist and you can't hear him. <laughs> You know, and it's like, uh, but I started doing, which a lot of DJs did. I never did this till probably two years ago. I started having two mics live during reception. I was just had my wireless and that way I could control it, but I had to run back and forth mm -hmm. and I said, forget it. I just got an SM58 plug in so that when the dad's done with the blessing, I can fade his mic down, say, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, bring the music up, and then go retrieve the mic. And it just right. makes life easier, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, two mics right. is good. A little, like you say, SM58 on, I put it on a gooseneck at my, you know, right where I'm working. And no yeah. one touches that. It's like my toothbrush. 
Yeah, no one uses my toothbrush. Nobody wouldn't show you toothbrush. <laughs> my mic. So. And it's a mic. cable on it. it. It's a cable I've had. Oh my gosh, I've had this cable for probably 15, 16 years. It's from <laughs> Ben Stowe at NLFX. It's three feet long. Good luck taking my mic and running with it. Yeah. But it's the same NLFX cable I've been using for well, 15 and, years, and it's really short. Real quick, I have to mention that once the dancing starts, I put away the wireless mic, and I have a mm. two or three foot cable. And inevitably, some drunk comes up and goes, "Hey, man, give me the mic. I got to go over there and say something." I'm like, "You can't. It's it's too short of a lead. Plus, I'm not going to give it to you." Yeah. But even <laughs> if I gonna, yeah, you can't go over <laughs> there with it. So if you're going to use a wired mic at the reception. Get a short cable. Do not give yourself a 20-foot cable because people will say, oh, you got plenty of line. Mm, right. I don't. You can't go anywhere nope. with it. Sorry. I use a snake right out of my mixer. There's no wire. Well, that's it. Go anywhere. <laughs> Even <laughs> <better>. <laughs> on a gooseneck, they're not going to ask you for yeah. it. Like, yeah. And that way, you, can't, you know, we still have to contend with the guests and not make them flip out about stuff. But reality is reality. No, there's not enough cable. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Or Jim, or Jim, like you say, you weren't you were on the list of people that are allowed to speak, so I'm sorry. The answer is no. Yeah. Well, no. and I've told you guys the famous line I've used a hundred times, and it's never failed. Ever. Yeah, my niece is a singer. She's on Spotify. She has 2,000 <laughs> listens. Oh, well. That's swell. I'm really sorry. I wish I'd known that. <laughs> this is just a speech, Mike. It's not yeah. for singing. <laughs> because what it does is it pushes down the mid frequencies. If I gave it to her to sing, she'd sound terrible. Oh, she's gonna be awful. Uh, I didn't realize that. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, they have specific mics that really like Mariah Carey's not singing on this microphone because it's probably not made. is. <laughs> and 100 percent people walk yeah. away like, oh, okay. I, 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 I can read SM58 on the side. They're like, yeah, she does. She sings in one of those exactly. Yeah, I've seen that at Aerosmith concert. <laughs> no, no, no. Steven Tyler uses the singing SM58. Dude, you should have sold yeah, cars, so man. You should have sold cars. The speech mic, not the singing yeah. mic. They both say yeah. SM58. They're almost identical. No. It takes a trained professional to detect S stands for speech <laughs> mic 58. <laughs> not, not singing, singing mic, mic is S mic singing. See? There's or a difference. The, or the, there or is. the beta 50. I'm sorry. I don't have a beta 58 for that you. That's your super cardioid right there. Wow. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, it, China. That's the difference. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. How about you, buddy? You know, again, touching on what uh, Brian said earlier, I am blessed to having uh, my wife working with me, and mm -hmm. she actually hands the mic off to the people who are talking, and she and and I share MC work, so we both, you know, share the whole entire entrance and stuff like that. And one thing I do, and this is actually. I want to say Brian brought this a long time ago, a product uh, that I use, uh, Microfoam. And Microfoam is a sterilizer for microphones. And I use that at the beginning of, of, of everything, at, at the middle, at the end. And I always clean the microphones with alcohol wipes. You know, it's very easy to get alcohol wipes from like Walmart and wipe stuff down. And we were doing it all during COVID. But we did it before COVID. We done it after COVID. It just one of the things that keeps stuff clean, and that's one of the yeah. things we had someone a clean microphone. They're mm -hmm. less likelihood of you know dropping it. They're less likelihood of doing anything crazy because they you tell them, hey, I just cleaned this, and they see you clean it. They're like, oh wow, you really take this yes. seriously. Take care of yes. the stuff, yeah, but, yeah. But the other part also is that again, Tracy's there. She ha she actually introduces the person. So this is father of uh, the bride, Tom, and hands the microphone. And then she's you know, stands off to the side and she's there to grab it from him. So there's no mm. include of a drunk uncle coming up and grabbing the microphone in the middle of it and making a speech. So it gives that extra control. If you have the availability to have an extra person there mm. to work with, even if they're just a person to hand the mic and grab the mic back, mm -hmm. not to say anything whatsoever, that is one of the things that does help a lot. Again, if you're blessed like I am to have a, a partner with you, that makes the life so much easier. But even doing it yourself, there's a lot of tricks. Again, everyone here is giving some great tricks and great ideas to save mm -hmm. you time and to save your microphones because we all know they're not cheap. Right. That's why I use gaff tape 
even if on it's the a stick. Purpose, <laughs> I will put that. I will tape the crap out of that. Nobody's pulling that thing. It's a good of. idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a real good idea. Yeah, because it's black. Mm. Everything's black. Nobody's yeah. gonna see that in a picture. You know. So, I, I, have, I have one stupid thing to contribute to this thing. Well, one, can't because be. you guys did a really good job, but I got one dumb thing to contribute to this. It can't be that bad. It's really dumb, and and Jay's gonna hate it, but it works. And and it, you know what? It's not what you do; it's how you do it. If you do it right, you can pull it off. If you do it wrong, you're gonna screw it up. I will introduce. Uh, I will open the whole the, the toast segment of the evening, for instance. Mm -hmm. And the way I like to do it is after everybody has food in front of them, because nobody wants to sit there waiting for their food. Going, I wish this person had shut up so I could eat. They're not paying attention to what anyone's saying. They're hangry. And not only that, but somebody might tell you that, oh, yeah, I'm only going to go three minutes. And, and they go 10. And then the other two people who are going to speak told you the same thing. They go 10. Now, instead of just having a nine-minute toast segment, you've got a half-hour toast segment. And your chicken, usually is what it is these days, right? Your chicken's now cold. <laughs> so, I like to have it after everybody has food in front of them. I will mm -hmm. get on the microphone. I'll get on the wireless microphone. Like Jay, I always have a wired for me, but then I'll have a wireless for toasts and speeches. And I don't use the wireless unless I make this announcement. Where I'll get up and say, hope everyone's enjoying their food. It's time for our father of the bride to give his father of the bride speech. And we're going to hear from the best man in Maid of Honor. By the way, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to notice where I'm holding this microphone. I'm holding it to my mouth. Just like this. See what happens when I lower the microphone? You can't hear me. So you have to hold the microphone to your mouth. All right, cool. Yep. Now, with that being said, I'm going to pass this off to the father of the bride. Bam. That way the audience pleases this shit, and I don't have to. Because if right. I don't do that, what happens is Karen's going to turn around during the father of the bride speech where he's like this, and she's going to be like, <laughs> it's gonna be lift the mic up higher. We can't hear you. She's gonna be your police. Yeah, Aaron, I got nothing for you. <laughs> the man, it's not a magic stick. It's not permission to speak. It's 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 an instrument. You have to hold it to your mouth. It works that way and only that way. So that's all I had to contribute. Sorry. Well, I Good had point. something very similar happen, Brian, which was so cool. I let the audience police the toaster. They will. When he had it wait. He was talking and then he lowered it, lowered it. And then I had a quick, I kind of went around the back of him and then I whispered in his ear, you have to keep it within a fist's distance of your mouth. And then I walked away and he started speaking again and they can hear him. And as, as he lowered it, the crowd all yelled out, hold the microphone up. Put it to your yeah. mouth. Put it to your mouth. Yeah. What's, what's, funny? Funny? Yeah. what's, what's yeah. funny is when, yeah, it's sure. the father of the bride speaking <laughs> and the parents are divorced and oh, the oh. mom's there is like, you dumbass, put it to your mouth. You know, like, oh, my listen God. To you talk. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, it, it can be fun. But you yeah. know what? What they do, <laughs> I don't have any control over it. If they exactly. sing the wrong lyrics to songs that I have played edited edited versions of, that's not mm -hmm. on me. Exactly. You know, neither is this. So. Well, we're going to leave it at that. And <laughs> say, hey, Jay, have a, have a comfortable tomorrow because I know you have to set up and then be there all day. You're going to be... You're going to be a tired pup when it's over. Well, to, tomorrow is weird for all of you guys that do shows. And I think I've yeah. seen pretty much a lot of you at different shows. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is going to be set up. And then the show opens at 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. Oh, my gosh. Because, and Brian, I don't know if you remember this, when we did, or Howie to, and John. Yeah, I was there. In 2020, and that's oh. what he did. 2020 but he the did it night yeah photo booth. he did the first night five to eight mm -hmm. and then it's all right. day wednesday half day thursday and we travel friday but it's yep. weird like when you break it right down you know but i i guess the the premise is you're in seminars all day and now you can go look at the stuff for a few hours or you can wait till wednesday and then see it yeah. between seminar you know it's so it's dinner time it's kind of weird yeah too. It is right. kind of odd, yeah. yeah. But 
Oh, you know, different. it is what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. I've seen the, the players are all here. I've seen Rachel Lynch. I've seen Danny Max. I've seen the guys from Mixware. I've seen the people from Chave. Evie is here. I've seen Ben Stowe. I've seen Kit. Mm -hmm. um, seen Cat. Seen Kit or Cat. Yeah, one or the other. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> after I said Kit, I'm like, wait, Cat's here. There Kit was a Cat. It's a candy yeah. bar. Yeah. They should, they should have a website or something. Didn't they have a Kit cat. at one point? That blonde girl? Wasn't she Dude, I don't remember her name, and I could not sleep last night trying to. I was going through the alphabet trying to remember her name. I thought her name was Kit. No. Well, maybe there was a Kit. I. Um, yeah, she moved to Florida and was working. What the hell was her name? And then she finally left. Stacy? Um, Lisa? Uh, Tracy? Katie? <laughs> I want to say it starts with a K. Katie. Katie. Yeah, that's Katie. Katie. I yeah, think it was, it was. Katie. Yep. It was Katie. Katie. Yeah, I really nice. Thank you, Howie. Yeah, yeah very it's like, nice. I've, you know, I told Kat, we were talking, it's like, you realize we've known each other now for 18 years. Yeah. The 18 wow. years I've known Kat. She, she's a super person, too. I really uh, like Kat. She is. Super, she is super, super nice. smart, too. Holy oh, cow. yeah, she knows her product. She yeah. knows her product big time. So, so. I'll be, we talked to Ben a little bit. We talked about SM58s and their legacy and... You know, it's, oh. I'm excited just to hang out with those people. I'll be hanging out with Bill in probably 10 minutes. Pulse will be nice. here at 830. I'll see DJ Mac at nine. I saw Chris Fox, as I said. Mm -hmm. yeah. When That's you awesome. see Bill, tell him Brian Red said, be good. And if you can't be good, be bad. Be good at it. <laughs> I will let right. him know. Be the yeah. best bad you could be good at being well, whatever. You know, yeah. You're at a casino and you get the back same at text. Every text <laughs> is the same. Hey man, what are you doing? I'm down here killing it at this blackjack. I'm down here killing it at poker. And it's like, I'm not, I'm in the room. Right. <laughs> you're not killing it. Don't don't start with the, you're making millions. Brian <laughs> <laughs> drinks them. Alrighty. Hey, I want to thank all of you guys so much. And we will see you next week at the same time.